So welcome back to iPhotography everybody. You've got myself, Stephen and Rebecca. Um, we're outside today and what we're going to try and do is just really a little challenge, just something a little bit fun to uh, kind of give ourselves a bit of a creative challenge with in shooting some multiple exposures. Um, but the one limit that we're putting on this challenge is that we're not going to do any editing with it. We're literally going to do it in camera. Yeah. So some cameras have this ability, some don't. Um, some you may have to do manually and actually edit yourselves. Um, and we can show you that, but this, this, this little challenge is really dedicated to just doing it in camera, taking multiple shots. So we're just kind of a little bit of a wander around the location that we're in and we'll talk you through some of the settings, some of the ideal kind of scenarios. Um, so what you should be looking for to make the best double exposure. Let's go. So the initial shot that I want to take and what's going to work best for these double exposures is to begin off with a silhouette. So we're looking for something that's going to have this dark fill that we can put our lighter subject either over the top or within. So we've got this column here and the light is coming in from behind it. So I'm going to take the opportunity to make the aperture really, really small. So we're going to darken the scene as much as possible without darkening the sky too much. So we still get a clear outline of the column. So that's going to be our first shot. So I'm shooting at F14, our shutter speed is 800th of a second and our ISO is down at 200. So we're keeping everything pretty controlled. I'm going to take that shot. So we've got our first shot now. And effectively what the camera is going to allow us to do is wander around and look for the second shot. And we can then overlay this on the live screen so we can literally get a live representation of what our double exposure is going to be before we take the shot. So this is why it's kind of very, very creative, but it gives you the opportunity to do it live in camera. And you can just adjust things and you can see how it's going to go. So I think we'll go and find our second shot now. So with this second shot, I really, really like the symmetry of the gallery at the front here. And given that we've taken a portrait of the column um, previously in terms of the portrait orientation, we want to try and keep the same aspect. So I'm keeping again in a portrait orientation and I can see it on my live screen here how the two blend together, which is quite interesting. We've got the, the shaft of the column running right up the middle of the, the columns of the gallery. So I'm just going to position myself so we're perfectly aligned and we'll take the shot. So it gives us a final version at the end and you'll see actually that the colours where they were in the silhouette, they're a lot more dense and a lot more contrasted than they were when they're outside. So the more and more you do of it, you'll realise that the bigger the silhouette, the more it dominates the frame. You'll get more contrast and more detail with your second shot within that area of the void. So I think we'll just carry on and we'll, we'll just try and take a few more shots and we'll kind of throw up a few images on screen. Right, so now I'm actually going to use Rebecca as my model to act as a silhouette. So given that we're at the same height and the sun's kind of quite high, I'm going to have to get quite low down and shooting upwards. Ideally, instead of shooting straight onto a person, you're not going to kind of capture the actual outline of their face, which will I think will give a little bit more detail and definition to the shot. So I'm going to get Rebecca to kind of be looking sideways outwards and I'm going to shoot profile from quite a low angle to begin with. So if you wouldn't mind, just turn your head so you're looking a bit more across. And then I'm going to have to get super low down. If you just lower your chin a little bit. And if you do actually just turn your shoulder, that's it, a bit more further around, that's ace. So I'm shooting at F16. I've got my shutter speed at 160th of a second and I'm trying to use as much as Rebecca as I can to block out the sun. So that's my starting shot. And now I've got to go for the hunt for the second shot. So for my second shot, now I've got the silhouette of Rebecca. Um, we've got this really, really cool piece of modern art of, well, it's like a, a, a cherry ice cream, isn't it? And I think it's great shape that I'm thinking of maybe using it to like the cherry is kind of forming the part of, you know, the silhouette within Rebecca's head, having the stem popping out, maybe like as a bit of an antler and the actual ice cream itself kind of forms a void of the body. So I'm just going to take a little shot of that to go inside that silhouette that we've just taken. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. We've got some really, really cool shots. We're really happy with them. And it just shows that you don't always have to take it into Photoshop or Lightroom to, to kind of apply these types of effects. If you do want to though, if your camera doesn't actually have a multiple exposure um, function built in, 
then check out the iPhotography blog. If you search for multiple exposure or double exposure, there's a blog about how to do it, obviously in camera, but as well as doing it in editing software. Uh, in the meantime, keep subscribing to iPhotography. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, check out all the other videos, and we will see you in another episode. Thanks for watching.